We're going to be looking at the vibration of a beam. On this situation here, we have an electrodynamic exciter, which is driving this beam at this point in the middle. We've got two beams, one on the left and one on the right. They're both the same. And I put two beams on here so that it puts the center of gravity directly over the drive point. If I tried to de develop just one beam on one side, the center of gravity would be over here somewhere. And when I drive it, the resulting torque would have given us a motion which is not easy to see and is not uh, a cantilever beam. So we're going to be driving up and down in the middle and we'll see if we can find some resonances and we'll look for the mode shapes. I'm driving the beam at 13 hertz and we can see that we're getting quite a large motion but we're not quite at resonance. Let me slowly increase the frequency and as I slowly increase the frequency we see the amplitude of motion get bigger and bigger until we're at full resonance. And this is about 13 and a half to 14 hertz. And we can see some quite large motion. Let's try and see what that looks like with a strobe light. So the beam is vibrating at about 14 hertz. It's at its fundamental natural frequency. And I have the strobe flashing at 13 hertz, approximately. And so we can see the beam apparently moving at 1 hertz. So we can see the mode shape there. The mode shape is essentially zero displacement in the middle, zero slope. Remember, we're looking at two cantilevers, one on the left, one on the right. So we expect to see the same thing on each side. I'm now moving up to the second natural frequency. I'm driving the beam at 77 hertz, which is just below the second natural frequency. And if I slowly increase the frequency, we'll see the beam motion get larger and larger. It gets into resonance. Now we have some large motion resonance. And there we have the peak uh, motion. There's some interesting things happening now. The middle, remember, is still expected to be zero displacement zero slope for the boundary conditions, but now we have something happening right here. We can see a node, a point of no displacement. The beam here is moving up and down as a sine wave. The beam here is moving up and down as a sine wave. But at this point here, we have no displacement. It's called a node. And we will see that the part, this part of the beam is out of phase with this part of the beam. Let's look at that with the strobe light. And just like before, I'll set the strobe slightly off 84 hertz so we can see with the aliasing effect, we can see the beam moving slowly. Here we are showing the second natural frequency with the strobe light. And we can see the node point is about here somewhere. And this part of the beam is out of phase with this part of the beam. The beam is still shaking just over 80 hertz at its second natural frequency, we've just slowed the motion down by looking at a strobe light. I've now moved the frequency of excitation up to 234 hertz. This is now the next natural frequency, the third natural frequency. If we look at the mode shape, we can see no motion here. At this point here, we've got large motion. We have a node here, no displacement more displacement here, a second node at this point, and then motion at the end. And so if we would look at the phase, which we'll do with the strobe lights in a moment, we'll see that at this point, the phase is 180 degrees from this point, and the phase is another 180 degrees back to this point. So the tip and this point will be in phase, and the middle will be out of phase. That is a characteristic of all nodes that if we transition from one side of a node to the other side of the node, we will see a 180 degrees phase shift. Here is the beam at its third natural frequency of 233 hertz. And again, I've got the stroboscope just a little off that frequency so that we can see the apparent motion going on. 
For a structure like this, a beam, which is fixed at one point, we can decide which natural frequency it is by counting the number of nodes. In this case, we have one here, one here, two nodes, and that becomes the third natural frequency. That rule applies for any structure which is fixed, but if we have a free structure, we have a different rule. But essentially, the higher the frequency, the more the nodes. I've now increased the frequency to the fourth natural frequency at 454 to 455 hertz. And it's difficult for us to see the beam moving. Let me increase the power to the shaker and see if we can see it moving. We can just make out a little bit of motion. Here it is at low level. And there it is at high level. We can just see some motion. We can also hear a little harmonic distortion in the amplifier because we're not getting the pure side wave. Let me just ease that down a little so we reduce that harmonic distortion. It's difficult to see the motion because it is so small. I can, though, find nodes. There is one node here. The second node here. And a third node there. Three nodes, therefore the fourth natural frequency. Let's see what that looks like with a strobe light. I've now increased the frequency up to 752 to 753 hertz, and we are now driving the beam at the fifth natural frequency. The motion's got quite small, although we can hear it, we can't see it. The displacement has gone down as we increased in frequency while the acceleration went up. If I increase the power to the shaker, like I did last time, I can hear some harmonic distortion, but I still can't get enough displacement for us to be able to see it clearly. But I can still find where the nodes are. Let's see if we can find them. There's one. There's two. The third one. And the fourth one. Four nodes and therefore the fifth natural frequency. Let's look at a different way that we can find the node lines. What we're going to do is we're going to put some salt onto the beam, sprinkle it along the beam, and then as I turn the power back onto the shaker, we're hoping to see the salt move away from the points that are moving and settle where the node lines are. Here we go. And so there are no lines very clearly displayed. One, two, three, four. The fifth natural frequency. I've now increased the frequency to 2,691 hertz. And from the noise coming off the beam, we can tell we're near a resonance again. But the displacements are very small and we can't see them. Let's try putting some salt on and see what happens. the energy back onto the shaker and we can see one two three four five six seven eight nodes therefore the ninth natural frequency let's see if we can find another one We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten node lines. Now the eleventh natural frequency. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 
the fifteenth natural frequency for my cantilever beam. Now we're driving the beam at 12.6 kilohertz. Let's apply the power to the shaker, see if we can find the nodal behavior. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It looks like the sixteenth natural frequency, but now we're getting to such short wavelengths that we're starting to get this kind of behavior here. And look, there's a little node running up the middle. We're actually starting to see this beam act more like a plate. So let's look at some plate modes. We saw on the last beam mode that we were starting to get node lines that were not straight across the beam, but starting to move along the length of the beam. That's because the beam was starting to act more like a plate. So what we're shaking now is a small square plate. I'm driving it right now at 62 hertz. So I put the salt on, and I turn the power onto the shaker. What we're seeing now, instead of getting node points, we're now getting node lines. And in this particular mode, there is a node line running across here, and another node line running across here. But what we're seeing is that actually it looks like a curved node just because of the way the two nodes are pulling together. Let's put a little more salt on, and we'll look for that shape pattern to develop again. So at first, it looks like we're getting curved lines in here, but really we can see quite nicely now the two node lines running at diagonals across this square plate. And we can see two node lines, one across here and one across here. What's happening is this plate is now acting like a beam that is bending and these are the node lines coming across here. Remember that every time we cross a node line we change phase and so if this part of the structure is going up all of this central part is going down and all of this part is coming up as it goes through the sine wave. There we see. They're not perfect straight lines, slight curves to them, but they are acting more like a beam than a plate. Let's see if we can find another resonance. What we've found now is we have multiple node lines. Two node lines going across here and here, and in the other direction, two node lines going across here and here a little bit of corner, curling in the corners. This is a classic mode for a plate where we see in phase, out of phase, in phase, in phase, out of phase, in phase, in phase, out of phase, in phase, all across the plate. A node line across here, a node line here, a node there, and a node there. I'm now at 1557 hertz. As we increase the frequency, the natural, the mode shapes become increasingly complex, and we can see uh, the behavior going on here. It's a symmetric plate, it's square, and so we expect to see a symmetric mode shape. Remember, these are the node lines, the lines of no displacement, and as we transition from one side of a node line to the other, we always see a 180 degrees change in phase. I've now increased the frequency to 4.6 kilohertz and we can see quite a complicated node behavior. It is still close to symmetric but we've started to lose a little bit of the perfect symmetry we saw before. That's very common with structures because the structure itself is not exactly symmetric, it's not being driven at exactly the middle and those small changes will become more noticeable at the higher resonances.